my dear friends welcome to today's video i want to take time to appreciate all my new subscribers thank you so much for joining this growing family to my returning subscribers i hope you guys are doing well i hope you're enjoying the videos i appreciate it when you comment and just tell me what you're thinking or what you've been up to or how you actually do certain things as you watch my videos now today i just wanted to sit and relax and chit chat with you guys i know most of the times i'm doing something and have a voice over but here we are today and i wanted to share with you concerning inner peace you know as i was reflecting on how busy we can become as women as moms as wives as aunties as sisters whatever role you play within your home Sometimes we find our peace is disturbed, but I just wanted to take time to encourage you today and to remind you, to even motivate or challenge you concerning inner peace. Now, I, I have my notes, so I will be looking at them here and there, but I learned that inner peace is a sense of calm or contentment that comes from having faith in God. And one step in obtaining inner peace is having a relationship with Him. So if you're in a place where you feel that your peace has been disturbed, go back and look into your relationship with the Lord. In the Bible, there are about 60 verses I came across concerning peace. And when you have peace, it's a state of rest in God. And this comes from knowing who He is. It comes from the relationship, as I mentioned earlier. In this world that we're living, peace is one of the attributes we're lacking. If you spend time watching the news or going through social media, you'll discover that there are so many heartbreaking events taking place. There are so many situations that will make you think that, is this even possible that I'm reading or watching this? But peace is shaken within the world. But I want to remind you that as believers, as Christian women, our peace does not come from the things the world gives, but our peace comes from God. Most of the things that are free in life are very important. And whilst we're living, we sometimes don't realize how important they are until we do not have them. God gave them to us freely because he knows and he knew that we needed them. And that's one is relationships. The second one is the gift of salvation. And the third one is the air that we breathe. None of them are in any particular order. But those are the three things that we really need. And money cannot buy. According to the Bible, peace is one of the representations of the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the kingdom of God. God desires us to have a fulfilled life while we're here on earth. And there are no shortcuts. When we have a relationship with the Lord, there are no shortcuts. We have to grow, we have to learn, we have to lean on his word, we have to trust in him, and we have to reflect as we are building our relationship with the Lord. Once you know the word of God, you will understand that he has a plan for you and his plan is great. That in the midst of the situation that you're facing, his plan for you is great and it is certain. The Bible tells us you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. To keep in perfect peace is a matter of the mind. The Bible tells us that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. It also tells us that we can have the mind of Christ, that we are not to set our minds on earthly things, but set our minds on things of above. And we are to set our minds is essentially in a walk before the Lord. So our minds involve our walk with the Lord. So what is sustaining your mind? What do you spend your time leaning on or thinking about? What upholds your mind? What is established in your mind? These are key questions to see and to analyze where you really are in your walk with the Lord. There are ideologies that we have based on our understanding of peace within the world today. But these same ideologies that we have that make us think that we have peace have robbed us from the true inner peace that the Lord gives. You know, God's peace cannot be calculated. If it could be calculated, he would cease to be God. He tells us in his word, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. 
That's what makes him an outstanding God. One of the things that makes him outstanding, he cannot share his glory with anyone. And when he gives us something, no one can duplicate it. We may try, but there will never be that fulfillment and satisfaction as the one we get from the Lord. Jesus Christ tells us, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives. Let not your heart be troubled. Refuse to be troubled. You have to refuse to be afraid. Remember in this world, whatever the world gives you, there's always some kind of price you have to pay. Nothing is really for free. But when it comes to the Lord, he gives us freely because he's a God of love. He's a God who wants to establish us in his goodness. The Bible tells us that he will give us perfect peace. And when you understand the meaning of perfect, it means absolute, complete, free from fault or defect. To have this perfect peace, your mind cannot occasionally jump into the world. <laughs> I know. But to have perfect, complete peace, you have to be in the word of God building a relationship with him. Philippians 3 verse 10 tells us that, and this was the Apostle Paul, and I'll paraphrase it a little bit. But Paul says, I gave up all that inferior stuff so that I could know Christ personally, experience his resurrection power, be a partner in his suffering, and go all the way with him to death itself. In his spiritual attacks against us, Satan loves to get to our minds. And I'm sure by now in your life you've realized how the devil wants to play with your mind. But peace is a choice and has nothing to do with what's around you. We say I don't have peace because I do not have a job. I don't have peace because I do not have a spouse. I don't have peace because I do not have a house. I don't have peace because I, I cannot take care of my family. When you find your mind wandering away, go straight back to the word of God. People don't understand the importance of staying in the word of God and being surrounded by godly things. If you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, I would encourage you to surround yourself with godly things. This could be friends, music, entertainment so that your mind can stay on him and your mind will be reminded that despite what you're going through, there is a God who is faithful and who will see you through and who will equip you and who will direct and order your steps. The Bible tells us that his plans are perfect for us. They're never meant to hurt us or harm us. Let us stay in the word of God. We are too quick sometimes to hop into the world and participate in worldly activities and then we go back into church and wonder. We begin to wonder, why? Why am I not breaking through? Why are things just not the way I expected them to be? Why am I struggling to depend on God? We struggle to depend on God. We struggle to believe in the power of the Holy Spirit because we have not given enough time to know who he is. We do not trust in his word fully. We trust it occasionally and when it suits us. Or when it's easy, it's easy to trust God on certain things, but not on other things. Our minds are so polluted that we cannot even realize when we're going through a spiritual attack or when the Lord is chastising us. That's why it's important for us to stay in the word so we do not become confused. Inner peace is a blessing that God gives to us. And you have to be willing to receive this same blessing. I believe we don't even see or notice when we are living or walking in inner peace. I don't think there's a moment that you can say on the 21st of June, I began to walk in inner peace. It's through conversation probably with your friends or family that you realize that, oh, when situations are presented to you that I actually have peace. The things that you used to fret about, you discover that you don't anymore. And you realize that I do have the peace of God within me. In Psalms 4 verse 8, it tells us that in peace I will lay down and sleep for you alone, Lord. Make my dwelling a safe place. David was able to sleep because he knew that despite all the distressing situations that were going around him, the Lord is the one who gives him sleep. He was comfortable in knowing who God is and how God will sustain him. Satan understands we are carnally minded and knows the impulse of us humans are the things based around us. So he takes advantage of the happenings and the situations around us and brings us to a place where we cannot rest and a place where we like peace. 
when we're facing these challenging situations, let us not look at the situation to be greater than God. And that's why it's important to read his word. That's where you get encouragement and are reminded. Let us look at those who do not know Jesus Christ for an example. They, you know, life in general, we all get an education, most of us, um, most people, and um, we, we're able to work, we're able to purchase things, we're able to, you know, do what we please and all tied to finances. But as Christians and as people in the world who do not know Christ, we all go through that. It's just a principle of life. If you work hard, you will get paid, you will be rewarded. Now, how is it so that even if you have all the money in the world, you lack peace? So we get to learn that there is peace that we need, that only God can give. And that peace, we get it through a relationship with him. David was able to fall asleep because he knew his God was in control. So if you're struggling to fall asleep, don't take it lightly. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Ask him to give you a peaceful night so that you can rest and sleep because your body needs to do so. Inner peace helps us. You know, in life, the, the more of a leader you and I become, the more we'll understand or the more we'll see the need for peace. Leaders know that without peace, there is no unity. And without unity, it is difficult for you to move a cause or an agenda. We do not have control over anyone, but we can focus on ourselves and, folk, and, and have the care that Jesus Christ has for other people. Because once you get to a place of growing in the Lord and knowing him and experiencing the inner peace he gives, I'm sure you will not leave your sister or brother in a situation of crisis. You are going to desire to share with them how they can get to a place of receiving the inner peace that you also are experiencing. It is my duty to be concerned with your life. It is your duty to be concerned with my life. We are brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. And even when we see someone who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ, it is our duty as Christians, as a mandate, to desire them to join us, to desire them to get to a place of the true perfect peace, the one the world cannot give, the one the world does not understand. How come you and I cannot be concerned with the souls? Why are we not concerned with each other? Why are we happy when someone is not going through a good time in their life? Why do we get joyful when people are in distress? That is very questionable. So my dear friends, whatever situation that you're facing, know that God has a plan for you. And as you begin to meditate upon his word, you begin to see what God has in store for you. It may not happen overnight, but I pray that the peace of the Lord, you will receive it because it's a choice that we make. You may want to dwell on your problems, but there's a way out. You do not have to walk around grumpy. You do not have to complain and murmur. Because once you do that, it's as if you're going back against what you've just read from the, from the Bible. So if you wonder, do I have the peace of God? You cannot be a complaining person and have the peace of God at the same time. So our prayer should be, Lord, help me tame my tongue that I may not speak things that are contrary to your word. Despite what I'm facing, despite what I'm feeling, tame my tongue. May my words be in line with your word. You cannot hide anything from the Lord. So you might as well tell him the challenges that you're facing surrounding or concerning inner peace. We all need that inner peace. There's a void within you and I. There's a void within the world. And peace that we think is through material gain, having finances in order, that's not true peace. It's just something that helps us live in this earth. But we need peace that only God can give, that will make us effective even in our walk with the Lord, that will be able to build our confidence as we even begin to share the word of God. Because we'll understand that I may not have the money that you have. I may not have the fancy house that you have. But one thing that I have that you may not have is inner peace. And that inner peace is what gives me hope. The inner peace is what makes me sleep at night. The inner peace is that what makes me joyful, that it helps me not hold grudges. The inner peace is what gives me contentment. And we need that in our world, to be kind to one another, 
and being kind to one another comes from us having inner peace that the Lord gives. You know, in the world, they are kind people, but they are kind to some people, but not kind to everyone. Can you call that kindness? No. But when we have the inner peace that comes from the Lord, we'll begin to practice true kindness. We'll begin to walk in his true word and according to his ways because we have the peace of God and that peace gives us comfort. That peace builds our confidence because we are sure of who we are. We do not need to be convinced. We do not need to, to have debates over the word of God. We are certain that our God is the King of glory. He is the Most High, the creator of the heaven and the earth. So we do not have to find ourselves trying so hard to convince someone. Our lives are Bibles. People will see, they may never read the Bible, but the way we conduct ourselves, our speech will reflect that truly we're the children of the Most High God. So even in this week, my friends, yes, you have a situation at hand. You may not be feeling well. You may be anticipating something. You may be going through grief. May the peace of God prevail in your life. May you receive his peace. The Holy Spirit is our sustainer. May you find peace in the word of God as you begin to reflect on his word. May he open your eyes to see exactly what he means in his word. And may through that, may your peace in him be complete. I really appreciate you watching this video, my friends. I pray that God continues to show mercy upon you and your household, that he will change your life in a way that gives him glory. And not only gives him glory, but also at the same time amazes you. Because sometimes in the world we're living, we forget that we are great. We're not great because of what we have. We're great because of who we believe in. So dear friends, in whichever situation you're facing this week, this month, Know that you serve a great God and his word says greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So if he's in you, you have peace. Receive the peace. Believe in the peace. Walk in his peace. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, my dear friends. Till next time. Bye-bye.